the Woodbook of the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we are coming at you with a 007 double feature of both a, a comic book origin story and the latest new movie of the final Daniel Craig one, No Time to Die. A big, long, uh, in-the-works kind of waiting. I guess, realistically, I guess, if we were alive this whole time, I, mean, I guess we, we were sort of alive, but like, you know, kind of like the kids at the moment when this, uh, or kids, children, babies almost, um, it's like one of those ones, there never really was this long of a wait for a Bond. I mean, other than like the License to Kill the Gold Knight. That, that's like the one that's like the longest one, like the six-year gap, you know, of going into it. I guess actually uh, technically Die Another Day to Casino Royale. Well, that's four years, but that, that's still longer than a normal Bond wait. It's usually every two years, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're generally like every two to three years when they're kind of like in full swing. You know, and sometimes it's like in the early days, it was like every year. Because I want to say, I think it's like Dr. No from Rescue of Love and Goldfinger all like bop, 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 bop. And maybe even Thunderball. And then it finally goes to like two years. I think um, without going into the movie just yet, I think like they were trying to figure out. I don't remember. I don't remember the name of the director who did. I know it's it's the same guy who directed the last couple, right? No, no, guy. no. The, the guy that directs this one, like, because I didn't recognize the guy's name when I was when I saw him pop up, and his name's uh, Corey or Kerry Joji uh, Fukunaga or whatever. And I, oh, okay. And I was checking, I'm like, I'm like, who's this guy? I've never seen this guy. And I literally looked at his movies, and it's like none of them stood out to me. I think they're just all like, I'm not gonna say just like they're all just little teeny movies or something like that, but I think they are just kind of like um, almost like very eclectic, interesting movies. So it only has like three movies beforehand, you know. And I just, I've just never heard of the Beast of No Nation, Jane Eyrie, and Sin Nombre. Beast of No Nation. I oh I, I know of that movie. I didn't see it, but I know of that movie. Oh, it yeah, does have yeah. Idris Elba, and never mind. I guess that is a pretty big movie then. It was a big Netflix movie. Oh, yeah. it was a that, that, that's the reason why it's a Netflix movie. So it's I think like it straight, to, Netflix, straight yeah. to streaming. So I know it, those always makes it feel like it's a little bit smaller. But um, so it is kind of. I mean, I know it's always kind of how Bond movies sort of are. That's like they generally don't pick like the big directors. They always kind of go of kind of like eclectic people that make really interesting movies, but might not be movies that you know is like a, a name brand in people's houses kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought I, I assume because I'd actually read the credits so much. I, I mean, I was watching the. I was I was watching all the. You know, <laughs> I was crazy watching cr- the flashing lights. And the, the wacky stuff, yeah. Um, no, he did um, he did Skyfall, he did Road to Perdition, he did American Beauty, The Last Guy, Sam Mendes. He, yeah. He's done a lot of and stuff. He also so. did Spectre and everything like that. Yeah, he, he's, he's done a lot of stuff, and he's one of those, like, directors that's kind of like, he, he did 1917. He's one of those directors that, like, oh, he did that? Like, once you look at his body of work, you're like, oh, this guy did do a lot of stuff, but it's just not the stuff that all pops to your head right yeah. away. You know, um, it's not like it's not like, this, it's not like it's Ridley Scott or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, yeah. I went, I went on, a, I went on a little bit of a tangent there, but I, I guess the way I was going to say, I think one of the reasons why I think this movie maybe took a long, as long as it did is they were first off trying to convince Daniel Craig to come back, and secondly, going like, okay, what can we do to make Daniel Craig come back, and what can we do to like, how, how are we going to go about this? What are we going to do? I, I think that was just them, tr- like, and then probably other filming obligations and that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it was kind of mixed. And I know that there was sort of a switch of, like, a couple of different directors, including Danny Boyle, who was on for, like, a moment and so on like that. Oh, fuck. So, the, so they did actually have... to see a Danny Boyle so, Bond film. So they did actually have, actually, a quite large director, at, you know, at one point right there that was just like, oh, because that, that, like, you know, Danny Boyle's almost equivalent of just having, like, you know... You know, any other kind of big director that you would, you know, like literally almost like a Ridley Scott. I mean, obviously not nearly as old as Ridley Scott, but, you know, like it's in that kind of like category. It's like, oh, that's a pretty household name. Yeah, I mean, I th- he's also one of those people. I like, got film people definitely know him. And then, like, if, if someone who doesn't know a lot of film, be like, who's Danny Boyle? And then you name off a bunch of his movies. Like, oh, I've seen a bunch of that dude's movies. Yeah, exactly. And he is, yeah, he is very much, I never thought of it that way, but he is very much kind of like a... I think he, it would be fair to compare him to like a younger, more like I me. Mean, I don't want to say upcoming because he's been working for almost twenty years. But I mean, um, yeah, I mean like from Twenty Eight Days Later and then Train Spotting and then, um, I mean that movie yesterday that was him. And yep. every so often you get someone like a Ridley Scott doing something like Matchstick Men, <laughs> and then like wait that was him. The guy who did Gladiator did this movie. <laughs> and that's one of the I kid you not. That's one of the best. <laughs> Like Ridley Scott movies is Matchstick Man. That's like one of those ones. It's like surprisingly extremely good. It is. And then like, uh, but 
without going on to a big long thing about like I'm, I'm sure like you know Danny Boyle has his own signature so does Ridley Scott but at the same time it's just I would love to see a fucking Danny Boyle James Bond movie that would be interesting because they only go with British directors right well, this, I mean this guy doesn't sound like he's British guy's in the not name British. but maybe this he guy's was the first one, uh, non-British person to direct the, a Bond movie before it, they, they get the first non-British guy to direct a Bond movie and we look what happens <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that when we get to it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. It, it, it literally sounds like every English person's fear. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll start on the comic. We'll start, we'll start on the comic, which is um okay. So we're doing the James Bond, the origin ones, the ones that came out by Dynamite Comic, and uh, th this is always the thing that I always like. Even as a kid, like I always thought, like you know, it'd be really awesome to see is almost a prequel to Doctor No that kind of explained like almost like early day James Bond stuff. And I always just thought like, yeah, literally have like bond when he's in like the military you know when he's in like the you know the royal navy and all that kind of stuff and uh the, when i saw his comic book or we saw it when we did that last time when we did the i think the one was just called literally ian fleming's james bond 007 and it kind of was like sort of a, a somewhat different telling of like odd job and 007 and like a, just a, kind of a different type of alternative story and i remember like seeing the James Bond origin one, and we're like, oh, we'll do that at some time. And then, you know, like all things, you kind of do a couple things, and you're like, okay, we're going to something else. And then it's like, well, shit, we should, do the, we should do that James Bond origin. We, we bought it. We might as well utilize it. And, and it just sounds like such a cool idea in the first place. So, like, why not? Let, let's do it. We'll combine it with No Time to Die. And to be fair, there's a lot of those 007 comics. Remember, like, oh, they're doing um, hard, gritty versions of double. It's, it's not softening up. It's not the PG-13 version. It's it's like hard, gritty, R-rated 007 comics. I was like, oh shit, really? I'll have to check those out eventually. I remember just seeing one and flipping through it. It looked very pulpy, like very old school noir. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll have, to, I'll have to check this out. And then the one we did, it wasn't those ones. It was still done by Dynamite. But I was like, well, that was still a fun read. But, but yeah. this one, and that's what I thought this one would be too. And this one still isn't like as... Um, those those the particular ones I thought it would be the artwork's still great it's still a fun read but it's it's like okay this is a little bit more of kind of like it, I guess it's interesting because 007 he just kind of changes with the times so so out of that it's like oh yeah I guess I don't think of him when I think back of Dr. No and they're talking about his military history you just for oh right they're talking about World War II oh yeah Dr. No he's he's half Japanese half German or something you know what I mean so it's all mm -hmm. this so it's like oh yeah I guess he would have if you Dated to this, then he would have been serving in World War II, which you always just kind of assume it's just kind of ambiguous, but whatever he did by now, you know? Yeah, and what I think it's almost kind of going off of in this book is sort of like the, the James Bond timeline of, like, the book ones, you know? Because the book <clears throat> ones are, like, specifically, it's like 1941, you know, James Bond, like, you know, joined the military and so on like that. So I think that's kind of, like, um what it's sort of going off of is that if this was sort of in like the kind of like the books James Bond even though he still kind of feels like you know a little bit different I guess than that it's kind of got its own thing going but this one does have like sort of a fun it reminds me of almost like a romp kind of like the young Indiana Jones series that's almost like the exact feeling I got out of this <laughs> Was like the same way, like when Indiana Jones is in like World War One, like that's sort of what this one kind of remind me of just with Bond and so on I like yeah I, I kind of got a little bit of that vibe too and the sometimes whenever you do the I mean prequel stuff is always kind of tricky with people with different fans because some fans want to see how Han Solo got the gun some people don't care how Han Solo got the gun and this is one where I think it does walk like a fine middle line I mean at, at the same time I guess I was kind of hoping and maybe we, we only read the first volume there's a second one mm -hmm. um I wouldn't mind checking that out down the line because I remember watching a documentary on the guy 007 was inspired by. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's not, as course, as flashy as it is in real life, but it's like, oh, wow, this guy really did get his hands dirty. And then I realized in this documentary, oh, shit, Ian Flynn, not Ian Flynn. Ian Fleming. <laughs> he's, the right, he's, the writer of, he's the writer of the Sonic comics. <laughs> Ian Fleming, <laughs> Ian Fleming is, was, was, was M. I didn't realize that. Ian Fleming was M in yeah. real life. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So, so like, I'm like, okay, well, that that's pretty badass. So reading, so like watching this documentary, I was kind of hoping that this would be a little bit more about the like covert stuff that that real life agent had to do and then amplify it and kind of work it in there. And now maybe the second volume will do that, but this is still very much like a young guy working in like, you know, kind of a military school working his way into a special division and you kind of see the early stages of like okay 
we don't have it as you're not in MI6 yet and you're not a double O, but here's some stuff that the majority of soldiers don't know that we're going to teach you and we're expecting you to be on top of your shit. Yeah, exactly. So it kind of does have that because it would be kind of interesting to see that like, yeah, almost based off those real characters because that's like the whole thing about Ian Fleming is he just like literally combined 007 based off a bunch of dudes he knew in the, you know, in World War II, <laughs> you know, and just like kind of combined like different aspects of them together and whatnot. And then there was literally a dude who was like, his name's James something Bond. I can't remember. What it was. He had like a middle name. That, but like that was one of the guys that like is one of the main basis off James Bond. I mean, I know a lot of times people go goes goes like the the dude the bird book, but I think that was just one of those ones that that book was in there's like James Bond. Oh, that's a good name. Wait, see, I knew a guy named James Bond once. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess at the time it would have been a name that would have just blended in. You wouldn't have thought anything about it. Like it could have almost been like John Smith almost. Yeah, well, and, Smith, and, I, and, I, and that, John that, Smith. That's literally what like uh, Ian Fleming said. He's like, he's like, I just want because you know he's like, I want everything around Bond to be exciting and you know interesting and so on. But Bond was almost kind of like just like, just a very just simple. He's like, I, he's like literally James Bond to me sound like the most boring name I could think of. But you still remember it. Yeah, and it's one of those things where reading this book because it is very simple. It, it isn't anything too. It's it's almost World War Two stories with a young ambitious. James Bond, but he's still not, I mean, obviously, you know, he's a guy fresh out of, like, the military academy, and he's still, like, he doesn't have it all down yet. Like, there are moments in this book where he's presented with a beautiful woman, and he's not that whole, like, they lock eyes, and immediately, like, we're fucking, you realize that, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he doesn't have that, he doesn't have that yet, but at the same time, he actually gets kind of nervous when, like, he says, like, hey, you can come up to my room if you want. Like, not no intention of trying to, like, win her over. He's just like, oh, really, up to your room? Like, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant it's safer there. So I'm, I'm just digging myself into a fucking hole, which you never see James Bond do. And I know some people are like, that's not how it would fucking go. <laughs> well, it's like, I will say there, there is that part. It's like, it almost, I felt like, I'm like, it did feel a little bit out of character because I feel like even Bond probably at 17, pro probably Bond at 17 was probably even more extreme than he is like as he got older and so on. Maybe he got more confidence the older he got, but I picture Bond sort of being like the guy like, hey, what's up, babe? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, doing some spy shit later tonight. You want to come on by? <laughs> 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 Want to see something badass? Just lifts up his shirt, shows like a fucking gun there, like a Luger, just puts it over. Yeah, I'm going to kill that guy in there later. Yeah. Um, I'm going to wait till super, he turns around and blasts shit. him in the back because, you know what, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, you ever kill a guy off a toaster in a bathtub take those before? Secrets. <laughs> Neither have I, but about tonight's first time for everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's like, and it's almost kind of weird where there's just like those scenes where it's like almost like James Bond's like, whoa, 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 like almost like he's just like almost like a cartoon anime character or something like that when there's like, there's a girl in the room. Well, I never took it as like full on like anime, like sweat droop, nosebleed. I never took it <laughs> as far as that. I don't know why. I, never... I, I almost kind of want the over the top anime version of James Bond just for no dumb reason but to have it. Like, there's no, like, sh when Shinji Akari first goes to Ray's apartment. There's, you don't have that. But, <laughs> like, like, he falls over, just like, oh, yeah, by the way, that's your sister, mother. <laughs> like, uh, I've, I've dated worse. Like, oh, James. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, but, like, at the same time, I didn't feel like he was ever incompetent. It was just we saw he wasn't as finely tuned and well polished and we still see he's the top of his class and we still see like you know at some point i do think it's funny at the beginning because at the end of the day there is a, a loose narrative through line it's just basically we have the first two issues we see his training and then after that it's like he's on this mission he's on that mission mm -hmm. and it, it's just kind of like i'm sure it's building up to something that all connects but the beginning i do think it's just kind of funny like Hey, leave the Irish boy alone, you know? <laughs> I also do do like that there's also the scene. There's literally, like, Willie from, like, uh, The Simpsons comes by, like, because, like, you know, uh, James Bond and pretty much, like, you know, kind of like the fat friend. He almost <laughs> he reminds me. He Willie from The Simpsons. <laughs> I'm like, just not fucking seeing oh, look that. At him. He's like, hey, lads, get off of the grass there. And then it's just, like, I love how there's also kind of just, like, James Bond's kind of got, like, the fat flounder friend from, like, Animal House with him and so <laughs> It's like, oh, guys, I just... And, like, that poor son of a bitch goes in the first bombing raid. Like, the Irish didn't make it out. Did he actually have a name? I didn't know it, but 
<laughs> he was the Irish one. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, and then it got kind of, yeah, it definitely goes in there. You know, there is some espionage stuff and so on. There's just like this one old guy who's like, Bond, tonight, my place, 1130, nighttime, come alone. It's like, well, what are we going to do? That's for me to know, you to find out. Okay. <laughs> he's like, yeah, oh, cool. I'm going on a secret mission with an old man. He said he's going to be candy. <laughs> Well, even that whole part, like, um, because then, like, when he goes there, isn't that the same spot where after that whole, there's two different parts where something to that effect happens, where he goes there, they beat the shit out of the old man, he chases the guys down, and then he gets, he chases them on a motorcycle, Mm -hmm. and then gets rammed off the road. Part of me almost kind of wished it was, like, and I know it's not realistic, I know it's not realistic, and I don't know how much they're pulling from the original source material, but um, part of me was kind of wish like he on a solo mission just made it him made it his own choice just to go after these guys and then along the way like wait you're Bond from the military academy we heard about you we assumed you died in the bombing raid what the fuck are you doing all the way out here you know and then but it, from there it does go on to like the okay he chased these guys they got away and then he goes back and you, you know what I mean yeah exactly so it does kind of have that. You know, and then he, he finally gets farther into, like, this kind of military academy. But it's almost like he's going, like, okay, you got to go to, like, basic training for, like, you know, Royal Navy. And this this jerk-off guy is going to yell at you all day long. But that's okay. It's part of the training. You'll get used to it. And then, uh, also, by the way, don't let anybody else know in the school, but we got some special plans for you. We got a new we got a new uh, MI6 organization coming up. But to, I, don't want, I don't want anybody else to know, you know what I mean? Especially that fat friend of yours. I know he's, he's got no other friends. He's going to want to tag along at some point. <laughs> <laughs> gonna say you ever go like jogging in an area where you know there's mountain lions bring a small dog that can't run fast with you like why do i really have to fucking explain it like oh, i guess you got a point yeah. <laughs> that's who that is I gotcha <laughs> yeah exactly He's right in the room with us. Like, he fuck. What's he gonna fucking do? He's still gonna show up. He's got no friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, guys, fellas. Uh, I mean, like, it's okay. You can talk about me like that. That's what my father used to do. Yeah, that's why I let him in the room. All right. <laughs> chop, chop, part of the secret mission. Here, here's the books of jokes I wrote about myself if any of you guys want to use any of them. Oh, great. Just throw it out the window and they just keep walking. <laughs> we got our own work. We got our own thing going, dude. We're good. <laughs> just five feet behind, just five steps behind me, okay? Cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, you're buying lunch always. Oh, I'm trying to just I'm glad to be part of it. <laughs> This guy's got no self-esteem. <laughs> yep, that, that's what my mother used to always say. Boy's got a lot of quit in him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did feel bad for him when he when he like bit the dust in this bombing raid. Yeah, I know exactly. You know, and it's like, well, there is all these kind of like somewhat like I guess like school chums that he sort of has, and you know, when they go, I, like some of them are still there by the time they get to like the the navy part where they're on the submarine. And whatnot, but as you know, as the story kind of goes, those guys all kind of start fading out. Well, even like I like the part when the, there's like a when they when they finish their training, like you think like, oh, we finished our training, we're done. Like, all right, lads, you finished your training. There's beers in there. Go have a good night. And you know, and then that was still a part of the test. And they were like spreading around rumors of like somebody might be a uh, a uh, um, spy. And James already deduced, like, who could be or who it wasn't. Nobody was a spy, but they're spreading it around. And James basically handled the situation. One guy could not keep his cool and pulled a gun out. And James said, point the gun at me, point the gun at me. And he pulled the trigger. And the thing was, was empty. This is why something to the effect of, like, he misloaded it or he put a, he put a blank in there when he wasn't, when no one else was looking and found it. Just because he didn't want it to go according to his, to what his presumed plan and then they're like, oh, that was really good. We didn't even planned for that fucking part. I, I thought the blanks were put in there by, like, the teachers or whatnot. I think it was. Maybe it was something like that. There was something, like, James was already ahead. Yeah. Somehow, there was something that happened. I don't remember what it was because it was a little complicated. But there was something that happened where James was already kind of ahead. And he just was willing to take the bullet from everybody else. And then out of that, like, oh, this James guy is good, but this guy has no chill. Get in the back of the fucking bus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because the whole point of the test was almost to be like, hey, can you keep your cool when somebody's got a gun on you? Like, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, and that scene was put together actually really well. That, that was a really neat part in there. It, it reminded me of Inglorious Bastards. I know it's easy to say anytime there's World War II and then, like, people are playing, like, 
there's this very this scene with a lot of tension with people playing cards in like a in like a basement or something. But still, mm-hmm. it gave me Inglorious Bastard vibes. Yeah, no, I definitely had that kind of feel. Even kind of even had sort of like um, uh, Kingsman almost kind of like that's sort of also what this intro kind of has that feeling. Because I mean, literally, when, when you watch Kingsman, like that feels like if there was a 007 prequel in a movie, that's kind of it. That was what I was kind of thinking too, and I was like, I will mention Kingsman just because it's it's kind of like the serpent eating its own tail by this point. But it's kind of like, yeah. at the same time, when you think about it, it was like, yeah, you know, just a bunch of young British guys, and a couple of them come from poshy families, but Bond came from nothing. And it was like, orphan! Orphan! <laughs> you know, so. And then as it goes on, though, of course, he's the one that comes up on top, and just I want to say this about Kingsman real quick. Kingsman's one of those movies, like as we were, as I was watching it, it's like I'm liking it. It's enjoyable. It's fun. But the second, you know, um, after Colin Firth dies, or right around the time when he gets in that crazy church mm-hmm. action from there and in, that movie's like, oh, this movie just shot up three whole, po- like two whole points for me. This whole, you know, yeah. <laughs> from there and in. So. But yeah, that's that one where like that that first one's so amazingly good that it's almost kind of a bummer that that second one just is like just kind of like a halfway movie, you know? It's just yeah. kind of like. And the worst part too is I thought that second movie had like one of the best trailers I've ever seen, and it's just like, and then the movie kind of comes out and you're like, hmm, oh, the, 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 that that's what you're going to decide to do? You kind of literally screwed the pooch on that film. Yeah, but, but the first one is so yeah, good, first especially because so it starts. Good. Yeah, because it starts off good. And then, like, all right, no, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And then you get to, like, the third act. I'm like, oh, my God. It was already good, but this just made it, like, perfect right here. And then, yeah, the second one is the second one is what it is. But, yeah, um, but, yeah th- this did give me kind of Kingsman vibes. And then the, how they're always having to – they kind of made a point how they're always having to take cover from the bombing raids and all that. And at some point, there's the guy with the scar across his face. Like, got to think on your feet, lads! You know, he's always like, you know, well, Bond is working on something. He's just like – Oh, did you think it was gonna be quiet while you're defusing a bomb? He's just like firing a fucking gun at him. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's almost like that sort of lunatic guy they they hired to get him all trained. I like the part too where like it's almost it's almost the guy who just gets a lot of pleasure out of like torturing children at the end of the day. Let's be honest. Um, it's like, basically major pain. Yeah, like there's a part where like like Bond's like climbing across the rope one. Night. He's like, oh, it's just, but it's kind of wet and slippery and it smells funny. He's like, oh, it's because there's kerosene on it and starts lighting it. Climb faster, boy. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and now I'm going to piss in your face as you climb across it. Oh, you need to do some uh, dehydrate. You feel a little dehydrated. Let me do something about that. <laughs> Come on, oh, go. I'm teabagging you and you got to keep climbing. <laughs> Be like, uh, has, has he gone too far yet? No, no. In war, somebody might teabag you. It's just the inevitable. Want to know who James Bond kind of looks like in this particular book? I mean, other than Bruce Wayne, like he always does in comics? Well, kind of, but like, I guess how angular his face is in certain scenes. And this is a really random statement, but did you ever read um, Batman White Knight? Yeah. You know the you know how Joker, when he ter- goes Jack Napier, how without all the makeup and all that, how he looks kind of, um, he looks a lot like how Jack Napier, like, like Sean Murphy, yeah. He looks kind of like how like Sean Murphy draws Joker with no face makeup. Yeah. Okay. I, I know what you mean. No, I can. Yeah. I can kind of see that. It's very random. Like for like this one really weird specific character from this one really one weird specific book. Yeah. <laughs> from this like a very one off book. Like that book kind of came and then it was like, oh, here here's a random Batman book and gone. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. But yeah, but we get to like a cool like submarine kind of action scene where there's mines and so on. They got to kind of like. You know, sort of like uh, outsmart the Germans in this. I mean, it's got all the kind of like it has like a definitely that feel of like, hey, let's have like sort of classic sort of World War Two kind of like moments, but with James Bond. Like that's definitely how this one sort of uh, is kind of going. Yeah, and I think somehow he in in the submarine one, there's I, I read it like two days ago, but I already kind of <laughs> forgot some of the stuff. Like he decoded something or he figured something out. Like, hey guys, I figured out a path that they won't be able to track us in if we just go down this way. Because it is almost just kind of like another standard, like, oh, World War II submarine mission, and then they, getting out of there, that leads them to an island, and at that island they find out there's, like, a German plane um, parked there, and they're just kind of camped out. 
and then from there, that part of the mission was badass. Yeah, where they, 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 they go over, they raid the German camp, and then they decide to take that plane out, and they're like, okay, shit, we're going to save the British ship out there, or the submarine and whatnot. We're going to get in this plane, and we're going to learn how to dive bomb it, you know, and take that ship out, which I think was just kind of cool. And just everybody else is like, oh, James, I don't know if this is a good idea. He's like, shut the fuck up. Like, I know what I'm doing. James fucking Bond. Don't you fucking talk to me like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just getting dangerous out there. My hoagie sandwich is getting moist. That's because you're holding it and sweating your palms into it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> should have wore my sandwich gloves like my mom told me to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget your sandwich gloves for school now. <laughs> but, um,. <laughs> But yeah, that, that scene's totally badass and so on. I mean, the thing is, the whole way through, the action's great. Kind of like, it, it, like they, they, they do go into kind of neat details, like whenever they're, they are kind of doing stuff. Like even like when they were in the submarine and they got kind of hit and they were taking on water and they kind of were like, okay, now everybody's got to be quiet because, you know, the Germans are going to use this, like, you know, whatever sound radar thing that they're going to be listening in for any kind of sounds of life. And if they don't hear anything, they're just going to assume that, you know, everything's flooding and, you know, everybody's dead already. You know? And they make a point to like shoot at like one of the mines, like that way they'll think that they they hit us or we they one they got they, we got one or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And then when they actually get when they decide to get out of there, it's like okay, we got to park the submarine at the island, and that's when they're out hunting for food. They come across, like you said, the uh, German camp with the plane, and they're like, all right, well let's take this fucking plane. They're almost just trying to wing it. They're almost just trying to figure it out as they go along, and out of that like. But they have, like, well, before we take this thing off, we got to, like, you know, like, does anybody here speak German? Like, Bond's like, I speak enough of it. And they're just kind of sitting around, and he's like, all right, all right. Um, and, like, they're all just kind of listening in. They're all just very tense. And even though it's German and there's no subtitles for it, it's you can kind of just tell from, like, oh, okay, this is good. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love how they got, like, the, like, how to fly this bomber plane for dummies in German, like, book there. And I like the one guy's like, like, what? He's like, what? They don't teach those, like, pilots how to, like, the fly? It's like, no, this is for if the pilot dies and somebody else has to figure out how to fly the plane. <laughs> I, I like that line right there and whatnot. And then from there, they end up, like, they just totally take the whole thing and they... They essentially just go out. They like they're coming like, oh look, here comes our friend. He's coming in. He's flying a little low, isn't he? Just starts unloading on him. Like, oh fuck, the German, the 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 uh, the British took it. Yeah, exactly. And, and they go into kind of cool things like how they have to explain that like the plane, like its design, like feature is that like it releases the bomb almost kind of automatically, like at a certain like you know dropping point or something when you come down. So it's like that's how it's almost like targeting's design. And I, I just thought those little cool extra details were neat. Yeah, there's that. And then from there, it's just basically mission accomplished. They go down and they kind of have like almost that um, maverick and goose moment, but he manages to save them. So, and then from there, you get to, like, he ends up going to Lisbon in Portugal. Yeah, and then that's sort of like the third. Because like, now I just like really when I think about this, I'm like this this is literally like just like young Indiana Jones. It's like there's like two parts, and then you go to like a next storyline, and then there's two parts, and then you go to like the next storyline, and. Um, yeah, this one where it's just like there's like this kind of Portuguese chick who's like delivering bread for like her father around town. It's like the best bread, apparently, you know, and everybody's like, oh, I love this bread. So warm and so soft and makes the best sandwiches. Yeah, but my it's moist. <laughs> put, just put the fucking gloves on. <laughs> I don't want that kid around this fucking bread shop in Lisbon. <laughs> I thought that that's how we all talk here in Lisbon. <laughs> <laughs> And this this one's almost like the classic one where there is just like you know you know you, you do anything wrong and the you know you, you do anything out of character and the Nazis are coming to get you. I do like how Double uh, O Seven does play a character role, like when like one of the girls gets kind of like attacked by like or like kind of like hassled by one of the Nazi like officers there. Like Bond comes out as like a a drunkard and just like leads them off and then like takes off his outfit in disguise. And it's like I always kind of wish I always like when Bond has disguise. You don't see it too often, but you see it once in a blue moon where he's kind of like character acting. You know, I guess it's it's like no different than like when uh, like um, Bruce Lee does the character acting in like Chinese Connection or something <laughs> like that. Like I, I don't know what it is, but it's like I like that when Bond does that. Like like I like the one in um, Octopussy, which I know some people think is kind of a weird one, but when Roger Moore like you know 
puts on the clown makeup, which because I know most people go like, you're making Roger Moore a fucking clown? But like, I just kind of <laughs> like that when he goes out there and then like, he's trying to defuse the bomb and everybody's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And it's like, he's a fucking clown. He's goofy. Come on, go out there and do shit. It's like, there's a fucking bomb. No, do something funny. <laughs> <laughs> Make a balloon oh. animal. And then fuck it. What? I don't know. I'm just saying the weird shit. <laughs> I like clowns. I a, what can I say? I had a traumatic experience as a childhood. Now it's coming out now in weird ways I can't really explain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, like, uh, well, the whole thing about this one is because he's trying to find a scientist who has, like, um, papers for, like, a particular weapon, like some kind of rocket. And, um... Oh, yeah, because this one has... Uh, actually, now that you mentioned the rocket, like, this one, it really kind of reminded me of is uh, the original story of Moonraker in the book. Um, it's like they don't go to space because it's written like the 50s. So it's like the whole point of that one is there's the dude who's making this like kind of a giant like V2 rocket and it almost kind of mommy sort of similar to this story. And that's his sort of thing. It's like it's, it moon rakes because it goes up in the space and it kind of rakes the moon, I guess, is <laughs> that rocket. That's how the title, I guess, kind of comes to be. But um, like that sort of remind me of kind of like the old kind of Moonraker sort of storyline. Yeah. And it's also kind of like, oh, this is the first time Bond failed. Because yeah. he's going in there, and this is the moment where, you know, because the, the girl, the, the Portuguese girl who's the bread delivery, she's also a spy for the um, for the allies there. So from there, it's basically him trying to, like, get this particular scientist and his documents out of Lisbon and over to the allies. And he fails in the process, and that's just kind of like, it's all narrated by the girl. And she's like, I'll never forget my British spy. Yeah, and Bond even gets his, like, one buddy just gets, like, brutally ran over. Oh, I know. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, shit, like, I, I fucking let somebody down and whatnot like that. Like, that's almost, like, sort of what it is. Like, oh, I was going after this, and I got somebody kind of killed in the process. Which I guess, like, in, like, later Bond things, like, Daniel Craig would be like, eh, whatever, he's dead, throw him in a dumpster out back. <laughs> <laughs> well, this next one is like, okay, this one was a little confusing. So this next one is just a little short, like, six... Ish, six page mini things is like originally featured in Playboy and like they show the they <laughs> like, show like that made me start thinking like is Playboy like heavy metal nowadays or something like that where they're like oh it's actually just got a bunch of comics in it and so on that's our well, new my thing my thing is I, I don't even know I mean I know Playboy is still around but at the same time I'm kind of like are people like is it like Nintendo Power are they really full but man I want to see how the Metroid comic ends like what what like I I'm curious to know like what about it's like the centerfold just starts being like oh what's the new centerfold well it's just a poster of 007 in this one you know yeah like okay we got through all that and the thing is okay it's Playboy so yeah okay there's there's articles sure whatever but then there's also well, what's it mainly there for tits and ass Mm -hmm. And this one, like, okay, the cover is, like, some, like, you know, blonde chick about to take her shirt off or whatever. But then it's just very much just a, what, it's just a, this is almost six, this, this is only six pages long or something. So it just goes by very quickly. And this isn't me saying, more tits in my James Bond. It's not that. I'm just kind of surprised. Like, this almost seems, this one almost seems more like just a tactic to try and, like, sell it to people, like, reading Playboy, <laughs> that are suddenly going to want to go and get a James Bond book from Dynamite Comics. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know, like, the term, like, you know, the term of Playboy. I mean, like, the two definitive things of that is literally Bruce Wayne and probably James Bond. But, like, yeah, it, I get that. But at the same time, it's like, well, those ones, like, it just, yeah, just, I, I just, like, I'm like, is that really what the read? Because I almost picture, like, the Playboy, like, this, the, probably the target audience of Playboy is probably an older gentleman guy in it, like his 40s and 50s is almost what I sort of feel like is the, maybe even his 60s nowadays. Like, I just I, I just don't feel like it's the guy who's like, oh, I can't wait to see what the new Dynamite James Bond comic is. <laughs> Not saying that he couldn't be that person, but you know what I mean? And it's basically just them trying to stop like a train <laughs> on like, stop a train that's carrying supplies or something. And there's just like some like, I don't remember if she's British or what, but just some some spy there with them and they fuck and it just stops at her just taking her shirt off and then the next morning you know <laughs> next and morning, that's all really like fucking like you, you know swinging like a hoe on like a train track <laughs> <laughs> exactly and like I, I almost think this part is like almost kind of like there's not really a whole lot to these like like six pages right here it just was almost like a sales tap like it feels like the shit they hand out on free comic book day like yeah. on free comic book day 
I, I, people I, get excited. People get excited. It's free comic book day. Like, yeah, you're just getting a free book that's trying to hawk their shit. Yeah. You can just, it's not going to really, it very rarely is like, oh man, I really, the, the key issue that I need for my whole collection is on free comic book day only. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or it's like the stores are like, okay, we've had these ones sitting here and nobody's fucking bought them. Just give them out on free comic book day. <laughs> I or think, it's like a reprint, or it's like you know, Thor Rengarok is coming out, so let's have a reprint of a of a comic that inspired Thor Rengarok or something like but, that. But you only, I mean? but only give them like eight pages because we want them to buy the real one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like yeah. I, I mean, it, I'll say this: that one is definitely the free issue, so it's like I, I mean, I'm not really complaining. I feel like that's just kind of like the little bonus just that happens to go in there. I, it, it's just one of those ones. I was just kind of like, huh. That seems like that. That means like all I thought was like that, that means there must be more comics in there, and not like comics like a National Lampoon's magazine where they got kind of like you know goofy, funny like because that's what National Lampoon's always sort of had was like it was almost like like adult kind of like sexual but like cartoony comic things. But um, I feel like this one's like it's like in a sense you're throwing in kind of a you know if you're throwing a dynamite comic in there you're throwing something kind of serious because I always feel like dyna all dynamite comics generally are is I always feel like they're comics made almost for like I always feel like my grandfather who like probably would never read a comic but it is like the one I feel like all the you know the things in there are all stuff that's like fifty to a hundred years old <laughs> like yeah, it's Tarzan like <laughs> and like you know Princess of Mars and you know even I'm just gonna say it's like 007 and Zorro and all these things I mean it's almost like it always feels like it's comics made for like 75 year olds now I know that's not necessarily the target audience because I like a lot of dynamite the dynamite comics and so on but that's just like when you kind of look at it you're like shit everything in here is like <laughs> 50 100 150 years old material Somebody could probably correct me on this, but I think maybe the youngest thing, like character-wise, I mean not not age of the character, but I guess franchise, <coughs> so, like maybe Red Sonia or something kind of like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean Red Sonia is over fifty years old or something like that. So is she? I thought Red Sonia came out like in the seventies or eighties or something. No, I think she's actually like fifties or sixties. It's one of those ones. A lot of those characters are yeah. like you. You forget. It's like Turok. Like that was the one too. Like Turok came out in the fifties. That's fucking weird when I think about it. Oh, that's weird. That's yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. So it's like there's some of those ones where it's like some of those characters, it's like they're like, oh, shit, they were actually way older than you really think of them as and so on like that. But um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, there's some original series also in Dynamite and so on that they have. But I mean, it just seems like the majority of their work's almost like, hey, here's stuff that like, you know, is just cool old timey things. It's almost like stuff that like, you know, I feel like it's almost made for like someone like the Steven Spielberg type people who like that like old sci fi and pulp type stuff. And it's like we're making new stuff of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking about the the, co the corner of my shelf that is dynamite, and there's not a lot of it, but all the stuff is there. It's like, okay, Red Sonja, Green Hornet. Like, you know? Yeah, that's so, what I mean. Like, it's, it's all like black and white TV stuff when you really Zorro. think. Zorro. Uh, Vampirella. Yeah. Then yeah. there's also like, uh, what's the other one? Like John Carter of Mars. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff they have, but yeah, there's like, there's a man with no name, which I wouldn't mind checking out, but you know. That's, I'm not. I'm wondering how authentic it's gonna feel. But I know they have a Mammoth No Name series. That'd be that'd be cool to see. I mean, a lot of times those ones are still kind of neat. I mean, like I think they they even had one that was like it was literally a sequel to like Total Recall. You oh know? shit! Yeah, yeah. yeah. like you know, and then and then once in the blue moon. I mean, we're getting off topic, but I guess it is Dynamite, and that's the one that did 007. But like during around Christmas time, like on Comicsology, Dynamite will sometimes have a sale where it's like for 15 bucks. They'll give you like seventy-five books, and like they'll give you full-on omnibuses and so on in that collection. And I bought it like a couple times, and it's just like you get overloaded. I mean, some of the stuff you're like, ah, I, I would have never got this, but then you get some stuff you're like, shit, I get like a Red Sonia omnibus that's got like six hundred and eighty-something pages. I mean, just that in itself would have paid for the fifteen dollars. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and, and then I... everything else is almost like a bonus. But I mean, like I got like in like some of the collections, I got all like the Green Hornet and all the Green Hornet stuff by Kevin Smith and all the Cato stuff and whatnot and. Yeah, just like it's like holy crap, but um, we'll get to we'll get to Bond in just one back to Bond in one second. I just want to double check something. The only Green Hornet I really have is like the Kevin Smith script. Um, is there like did they just say, hey here's a little side project? We just thought it'd be kind of fun, or do they use that as the jumping off point moving forward with the Green Hornet series? Well, there's the Kevin Smith script one. I haven't technically read all of them yet because I, I just got a big old fat collection of them. They're in, like, the stacked array. But there, I know there's the Kevin Smith one, and then there's, like, an expanded one where Kevin Smith, I think, writes more stuff in there. And I know he writes the Cato one as well, too, which is its own series, and it's got, like, 16 issues or something like that. I'll have to keep my ear out for that or look at look, not try out for a while. I'll probably have to look out for that one. Keep my ear out for that comic book. I, I want to hear it coming at me. 
<laughs> you have to check that one out. I what, what are you doing? I'm listening to comics today. <laughs> <laughs> Just flipping the book next to your ear. Oh, I, I, I can hear the colors coming out right now. <laughs> but um, speaking of one it's bond, it's like Braille for the ears. <laughs> Speaking of one Bond going to another Bond, we get to No Time to Die, which actually it's almost kind of a fitting thing. We start with Bond origin in a sense. Not saying it's like the oldest Bond thing out there, but it's like, you know, kind Spoilers, of like yeah. an early Bond story. And then we go into Bond, you know, end game in a sense. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah, de de definite spoilers. It even like, you know, but um, yeah, in a sense, we like to say it like it's almost like you went and saw 007 and now we're all going to talk together, though only me and Ryan have mics. <laughs> well, here's the thing with this movie. Um, I now, now uh, let, me, let me say this. First off, of the two of us here with microphones, um, you are a much bigger 007 fan than me. I like 007. It's not my favorite series. Um, if a new movie comes out, I, see, I check it out. I haven't seen every movie. I've seen majority of the movies, most of which I like. Um, and, yeah, um, I liked Daniel Craig. I thought he was really good. I, for the most part, like this movie, but I, I gotta say, before we get too far into it, beginning's great, even regardless of what, if you like the ending or not, I think it's a strong third act. Mm -hmm. That second act, holy fuck, you could have trimmed like 20 minutes out of that. That was, that, that middle dragged so fucking long. But, well, the weird thing is, because this is one, the longest 007 movie they've ever put out. And I, I don't know if it's one of those movies but it's because they had the extra time that they sort of added, like, more shit to it. Like, I kind of wonder that. You know, because, you know, the average Bond movie has always been about two hours, you know, give or take some change. You know, uh, I, like, I know some of the, the other long ones is Casino Royale, that one. But I think that's because it's like, well, shit, we finally got the rights to do the original book. Let, we're, we're, let's just, you know, really expand on it. I think, you know, that, that one's a little bit different. But then, um, you know, the rest of them are all, you know, give or take two hours, you know, maybe maybe 210. Maybe a little bit under sometimes, but um, yeah, this one's like almost like it's like two hours and forty minutes. That's why it feels it literally feels like like or like 007 like in game. Like they really were gonna kind of make it feel epic and so on. And, and even though I will say like I mean I, I overall really liked it. I think what I really liked about this movie all in all was that like it's a Daniel Craig Bond, but it captures like so many elements of like all the other Bonds. I mean and, like literally all the other Bonds. Like it has. Um, you know, not only does it have like Sean Connery moments, but it has a lot of kind of like Roger Moore feel to it. It literally has even a ton of George Lazenby to this movie, like more than you would almost even expect. You know, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, like it felt like it took like the full spectrum and maybe because it's Bond, you know, 25 and, you know, in a sense, it's the end of one era that they're like, you know what, let's just make it kind of... um in a sense, like a kind of a, a Bond homage, which is technically what they did also sort of with... Uh, um, die another day i mean they did it in like a sort of a different way where they said like hey we're gonna c combine a hard edge bond thriller and then like an almost an, an over-the-top kind of like moonraker feel all at the same time which you know for some people like that's a little too extreme and whatnot but i, I mean i like i like that die another day actually extremely it's, it sounds weird that movie gets better every time i watch it but um no time to die sort of had that same thing too because it's like in this one it's like in a sense this is like the james bond for like daniel craig that feels like the most kind of bond in a sense you know because it's almost like he, he, it's got just that, you know, he's got more gadgets in it. It's got a little bit more, like, witty humor in it. Not saying that that's not in those other Daniel Craig ones, but, you know, those those first handful of Daniel Craig ones, though, they're, they're really good. Those are the ones where they kind of do the, we're, we're doing the, the grounding in reality. We're going with more of, like, the Sam Fisher kind of, like, style of spy. You know, it's, it's 2000s. It's post 9-11. It has all that kind of stuff. But this one kind of feels like, you know what? They haven't made an Austin Powers movie in a while. We're going to get some fun in here for Bond again. Yeah, well, even this this movie right here, like, even though I know you're way more, um, you know, Bond better than me, even I was watching this like, okay, you guys are trying to mix it all up. Because a common complaint I heard from a lot of Bond fans is they almost make double o the Daniel Craig ones to a certain extent or almost too much like a Jason Bourne movie or something to that effect. Where yeah. it's, they took away the gadgets, they took away more of the overtop villains. And then you got some of that here and there, but not a lot of it. And even though I think out of the Daniel Craig ones, my favorite is probably Skyfall. There's even a joke he says somewhere in there when he meets Q for the first time. And he says, 
a pen and a gun. Not exactly Christmas. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, so they, they kind of acknowledge, like, yeah, the, the gadgets aren't as amazing in that. But then and th- then this one, it's just like, oh, you see them do with the, the magnets and the, the, the part where they, they throw, like, some kind of bomb thing. Not, not a real bomb, but something uh-huh. down, like, an elevator shaft. Shoots out all, the, all these magnets. You're like, oh, is, what's this going to do? And they, you see they're able to kind of slowly hover down and like without a rope or anything because they're all like covered in magnets or something to that effect like that's very i mean that's a very modern take on roger (laughs) moore i could see maybe that for one of the later um um pierce brosnan pierce brosnan yeah i could see that for one of the later pierce brosnan ones Mm -hmm. but i but i was like okay and then they started putting in a lot more of the uh the uh, um, like the one liners, yeah, because yeah. Bo- like he had a lot of one liners, and it's like, and I felt like they all hit really well, and I was just like, like oh, the, like they're doing pretty good with this, and so on, like, and just even like even like you know the intro scene, it's got this you know badass action scene where um, um, they're in the Aston Martin, the original one or whatnot from Goldfinger, and I like how they really fully utilize that Aston Martin. Like, he hits, like, all the buttons in it and so on, because that's always the kind of thing. It's like, a lot of times Bond kind of gets a car, and, you know, he uses, like, the like the two gadgets maybe in there, and that's kind of about it, but it's like, you always felt like you wanted to see just more stuff going on. I'm like, well, shit, this feels like 007 racing now with this going on. He's using all the gadgets and going all full, you know, full hard car on it and everything. Well, one of those badass parts in that is when he's surrounded... And he just starts doing donuts, and he has, like, the two miniguns out of the headlights. I know that's in the trailer. Yeah. But that is probably the most badass parts right there. Yeah, exactly. I also like because he sits there at first because it's, like, that one where he's like, he's like, you fucking betrayed me. And it's just, like, they're just blasting the car. It's just, like, it, like I just love because, like, the girl's just getting scared and whatnot and so on like that. It's, like, Bond Reels are like, it's not going to go through here. Q, Q made this glass. <laughs> I, I, I made sure I, I stayed the night at his house. I made sure he stayed up all night putting new glass in. Because I love how, like, this 007, like, bullies Q, where I feel like, you know, you know, back in the day, old Q, you're, you, he wasn't going to, you know, he's almost like, you know, your crazy old uncle and whatnot. You're not going to be able to bully him. But I like how since it's, like, a younger one, it's like, I feel like Bond just sort of bullies him. Yeah, and then it sounds like, like while well, he's like, hey, while you're working on that glass, I'm going to fuck this, this lady I met at the bar up in your bed, all yeah. right? <laughs> Don't cheap it out now. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I mean, like, he, like literally, Bond even like when he comes back at this one, he literally just barges his way into Q's house and be like, "I'm staying the fucking night." <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, you get the couch. Q's about to have like a guy over for dinner, and then like <laughs> Bond's almost almost takes a seat at the table. <laughs> Like, don't mind me. Like, hey, can I sit? I'll sit at the end of the bed tonight. Yeah, he's like two steps away from just like Q's making dinner and fucking Bond's over there serving himself a plate. <laughs> and they're just like sitting down in his boxers and like watching TV. Like, like don't mind me. What's your Wi-Fi password? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can we hook up the N64 and play some Goldeneye? <laughs> Not the EA remake, <laughs> the original. You know, but I got somebody to mod it so that it puts my face over your Pierce Brosnan's. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, so it kind of has that. And the other thing that really like this thing made me super excited is um, a- okay, after Bond's driving the DB5 Aston Martin, you know, in the beginning. Later in the movie, he's driving the Aston Martin from the Living Daylights, the Timothy Dalton one. And that's my favorite 007 car. You see, I don't remember all the cars and all that. And um, the Aston, the, the Aston Martin, I was like, oh, he's got another one. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know? So I was like, good for him. But then I was like, okay. I know they were playing, uh, it was the George Lazenby song. Yeah, they, 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 they got the, uh, yeah, because they, they, well, because this movie almost gives literally a reversed sort of a On Her Majesty's Secret Service. You know, and it's like, yeah, especially in the very beginning, I'm like, shit, they're look at they're already playing like the, the theme song of like honor, you know, honor, honor, majesty, secret service and whatnot. It's just like I felt like, God, like this felt like stuff to just like, you know, it seemed like just like, you know, just a while ago. It's why I was a little bit hesitant to those Daniel Craig ones at first. Like I've, I've come around to really like him a lot. But like at first, I just felt like they were doing the thing where they were just sort of ditching like everything that like you kind of grew up with Bond. And I mean, I get it. They're trying something new and fresh. But sometimes it's like. One of those ones, I guess, just from our like era of coming from the Pierce Brosnan one, it was like, dude, no, 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 give us more. Like, we're still like fo- to- totally invested in everything Bond. Like, I don't know why you you're pulling back now, but um, you know, that's what I liked about this one. This one felt like, no, 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 we're recognizing all the Bonds. You know what I mean? Like, almost in a sense, saying that thing like, there's no such thing as a bad bad Bond movie or a bad anything like that. It's like it's all you know, kind of part of this, and we're bringing it sort of all together in the Daniel Craig style. 
Well, I even thought that um, there, if there's one thing, because like I, I, there's not a Daniel Craig one I, I totally dislike. There's ones I like more than others. Mm-hmm. Like I really like Skyfall. That's my favorite too. I, I really liked Casino Royale. Mm-hmm. Um, Quantum. Of, I mean, I probably like this one more than Quantum of Solace, but I still enjoy Quantum. Of, I still enjoy Quantum of Solace. My least favorite was probably Spectre. Yeah. Um, I, I think so. I mean, I've, I've only watched that one like two or three times. So it's like, I feel like I got to kind of give it some more watches because that was how Kwama Solace was. I remember that one kind of walking out going, hmm, that was different. And then the more I watched it, I actually liked it a lot more. But I, I barely remember Spectre. I remember like a few key things, but I barely remember Spectre, if I'm being 100% honest. Like there are things I remember in the happen in the movie. Like, okay, yeah, Christoph Waltz is Blofeld. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're, they're the adopted dead. brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, Day well, of the I, Dead. I, I like when they do like the brother thing because I just remember like when thinking that movie, I'm like, dude, that's the storyline of Austin Powers 3. Why are they doing that? <laughs> yeah. Like, that was all I thought. I'm like, all right, you guys always say you want to get away from Austin Powers. You just did literally the most Austin Powers thing you could do. Yeah. Well, they did the whole thing, like, oh, they're related. You know, that whole, they're not really related, but, you know, the whole, yeah. they know each other. Like, really? Yeah. Really? And then, like, it was also at that period where, I mean, a lot of movies got called out for it, so they stopped doing it. The, the, the prominent one that comes to mind is Star Trek into the darkness or whatever but there's a thing where a lot of like franchise movies we're doing the thing like we're bringing in this known actor that we likes to play a very special character is it con no is it is, is it con no it's not con fuck you <laughs> and then like the movie comes out and he's like oh my name's not john jacob J- jacob jaberheimer smith it's con like oh fuck we got you it is fucking con like no, no, you did. We, yeah, we, yeah. We, we all saw it come. Yeah, because it, it, it kind of did that. And then, um, yeah, and then even, like, I will say, like, the Blofeld and, like, Bond kind of, like, knowing each other since, like, fucking, like, school days and whatnot. Like, I thought that was, like, I, I don't really, t- people think that's a really clever, like, way of, like, storytelling. I always feel like when you when you do, like, I call it, like, the cul-de-sac style of storytelling where everybody fucking <laughs> lives in, like, the same, like, neighborhood. And it's, like, here's our, like, main protagonist kid. Here's the bully kid. Here's the rival kid. Here's the girl next door. Here's the hot chick. You know, it's, like, I feel like, w- w- what are we doing? Like, like why? It, it's a huge world out there. No, nobody has to know anybody in this sense. I would like to see like 007 High, where you just have like, <laughs> different villains. There for a minute they were doing like it was a show that never got made, but they released a bunch of production art of it. They had like Gotham High, and it was like a teenage Batman, and all the villains were different, you know, like just archetypes of the school. So you could tell it would have been more of a comedy. Mm-hmm. But in like that, I mean, maybe it was a maybe the show would have been dog shit. Maybe it would have been, but at the same time, just like. I kind of just want to know what would have happened. So, you know, Dr. No, uh, Blofeld, J- like Jaws, um, um, Hat, um, oh, uh, uh, Odd Job. Uh, odd Job, yeah, Odd Job. Any number of Bond girl, like every Bond girl is a popular girl at school. What are you going to fucking do? You know, so. Well, I feel that would be the one. It sounds weird. I know because this would bother some people, but if you almost did the thing, this, this sounds like the most bizarre way to say it. If you did it sort of like Teen Titans Go, it doesn't have to be nearly as wacky, but you yeah. do it where you turn into a, a sitcom instead, and that's sort of sort of what it is. I feel that would kind of work. Like, in a weird yeah, way. When I, when I, I know that would be the most, like, there's to be some people that would just freak the fuck out if you did something like that, but I think that could be actually kind of fun. I'm saying this strictly. Not, I'm not saying that's the next movie. Make a prequel. I'm saying no, no, no. This is like a little parallel universe thing. Yeah, like exactly. Ten minute shorts. You know, because something, something maybe doesn't have to be as loud or as wacky as that. But something is Teen Titans Go. But yeah, something that that just be kind of interesting, be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, going back to this movie, I think it does do a good job of like cherry picking everything from Bond from B- previous Bonds and trying to like. I'm, I'm wondering how it's going to appeal to people who don't like Daniel Craig that much because it is trying to really go out of its way and grab these other elements and it does a good job of that most most of the time but I do feel like this movie has a real slow down part and that slow down part really drags maybe just because I was at a late showing but it, it, it was like after like um, spoilers again spoilers again mm-hmm. after Felix dies and he goes back to England from there to the point where he meets up with, so I, I guess it's right around when Blofeld dies. Yeah, which I, that, I, I will say, I guess that when, since you mentioned Blofeld dying, I felt like that was kind of like, it's like you sort of got Blofeld in here, and he's only been there for one movie, and then you, how, how does he die? Oh, well, Bond has some, like, you know, 
a little bit of extra like perfume on his hand that you know has the little micro robots and and he accidentally went to try to strangle bro blofeld and uh that got him and that's what killed him it was like i felt like like that's it <laughs> well even, well yeah there's that and here's the thing like um i was actually kind of excited when i heard blofeld was gonna be back in this because yeah. the thing is um Chris, Christoph Waltz is an amazing actor, and he was barely utilized in the first in the last movie. And the thing is, it's like I almost feel like you can correct me if I'm wrong here, because you're more of the expert on 007. But I always feel like 007's the protagonist, but it's almost sometimes to the effect of like really the star of the show for the minute is the villain, mm-hmm. and that's just, we just need someone for the villain to play off of. I, I feel that depending on the movie. Not every movie, but well, sometimes I feel like they got a villain so good and they need someone, they need to play off Bond. And he doesn't, he's barely in the, the even though they were trying to make a big deal that he's Blofeld, he's barely in it. Yeah, well, I, I know that's the thing is I feel like he's very, it's like you almost got an amazing actor who could really chew scenery all day long as Blofeld. And yeah, I just thought it was kind of weird that like that's like the if there's maybe like a complaint I kind of have to it is I just feel like what why would you I, I don't like kill off Blofeld but like literally he should have been in the entire movie I think you know what I mean I think he should have found a way he somehow some way got out of the, the prison you know and, and at the very end of the movie he's working with um you know Freddie Mercury and whatnot and that that's like the the end of the movie there is like like they're together I think it's just kind of weird that Blofeld literally only has it like a cameo. And then he just kind of, like, dies off from, like, you know, robot perfume. Well, even, like, his scene, it's it's a good scene. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. He gave him a little, a good monologue, and he was creepy, and he was odd, and all this and that. But it was just one of those things, like, okay, so we're getting a second chance at Blofeld. Oh, no, there it goes. And, I don't know, it just seems weird. And, and like, to clarify what I said, because like, I probably get a lot of 007 fans pulling their hair out. I know that Bond's the main character, but I feel like a lot of times they almost use... 007 films is a vehicle to show this actor everyone likes, a character actor everyone likes playing a really good villain and th- they had the right recipe for it in Spectre and they didn't really utilize it to like the last bit of the movie really mm-hmm. and that is kind of, they, they just kind of like sweet, well they just put a little let's just yeah, magic robot perfume kills them on the next thing yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's that kind. Of, it's, it's like a Batman story in a sense. You know what I mean? You let the the villain sort of chew the scenery, you know, and then you have Batman kind of come in and kick his ass and do the cool and Batman smack stuff. Smack him around. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, well, one thing I just want to say before I kind of forget is I, I love I love how this movie starts because almost if you explain it to somebody and then someone said, "Hey, how's this like? How, what's the very beginning of this 007 movie like?" I'm like, it literally starts off with a girl playing for Tamagotchi. <laughs> 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 well, like, like when I saw that, I was, was like, I'm like, I, I love that because it just almost sounds hilarious if you described it that way. Well, what's the intro to like the the, the new 007? Oh, it's a girl playing her Tamagotchi. At the same time, is that the pre credit also... scene? Yeah, that's actually the whole. Pre- <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also like that idea of like anything else happened? No, nothing else really important. Like, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> like um, just that, just that whole part right there. I also shows just like the age difference between like Bond and Madeline or whatever her name is. <laughs> well, that's why I just thought too. Is I was like, I'm like, okay, so that means she's like literally our age, and that means it's like it's like if it's like if it's all I thought was like it's like that's if I was dating Daniel Craig. <laughs> I could marry 007. <laughs> yeah, that, that was I all could. I thought because I'm like literally we're like target audience for like Tamagotchi, you know, Digimon. Um, uh, Gigapet era stuff. So like that, pretty much when I saw that, I'm like, that means that that girl's exactly our same age. <laughs> we, we 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 could be Madeline Swan right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that whole part, you know. Well, I I will say for a minute, like, because we, we went to see the movie and you know the 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 credits don't pop up yet. My fiance, because you know what's happening at the beginning of the movie, because I, I guess I don't think she saw the trailer for it or anything. And then we see like some guy, like we see Rami Malik with the um, creepy ass serial killer mask and like a snow co outside. There's a jump scare, mm-hmm. and then like you know we just see him like stalking her around, and she leans in like. Is this the fucking 007 movie? Well, because it literally starts off way different. It's like it's like a horror movie when it starts off. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean. For a split second, I was kind of wondering. I think this is the Double O Seven. I saw the Spectre <laughs> ring. I'm like, oh yeah, it's Double O Seven. I didn't walk into the wrong, wrong film. I know it's October, so I mean, I could have walked into a horror movie for all I know. Well, when I first saw like um, X Men, the original X Men, 
I walked in like, you know, like three minutes late or four minutes late. And it was like right when Rogue kisses the guy and his face gets a bunch of veins in his face. Like, oh, this is some fucking horror movie. This is an X-Men. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what did I just step into right now? Yeah. But um, yeah, that's kind of how it is. But I just still, I, I love just the fact that there was. A, it starts off with a Tamagotchi right off the bat. <laughs> I really wish that like it cut to a scene later on and Bond for some reason is playing with the Tamagotchi. I, I know that that probably drives some people up the wall, but I think that'd be hilarious. Isn't it? <laughs> it didn't bother me, but when 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 Bond made a Book of Mormon reference, I was yeah, surprised about that. I, I, I saw that too. I was like, holy shit! It, like in a sense that that look goes is like, did Bond just make a South Park reference? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that, that's all I thought it was like that, that's literally what he did yeah so um, but yeah like I mean at the end of the day I, I did like this movie it was a fun movie and like yeah. but I guess the big part of it is actually let's, let's talk about this because um, I feel like this will be a point of contention for a lot of people other than the very end but uh, mm-hmm. I didn't mind the new 007 they had I actually kind of liked the back and forth they had they kind of had you know the um because you know they they were both good at their job, and if 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 007 was just like tripping over his own balls yeah. the whole time, be like, like it would be kind of like, oh fuck you. But the thing is, like, oh no, he still has it. He's just dealing with somebody else who's very competent. It's just them constantly one upping each other. And I'm like, okay, I like that dynamic. Yeah, well, because I I actually thought too, because when they when they introduced that know me character, and then they kind of give her the 007 thing. I mean, like that's literally there just to make people in the audience like get really angry. And, it, it, and it's not one of those ones. Like, I, I know some people would be like, oh, they're just angry because it's a black lady. It's like, no, no, no. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just that you you literally give it. It, it, could, be, it could be a fucking dog could be called 007 and people would flip <laughs> out. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just that that's not Bond. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. And I, I know that that's sort of what it was there for. But I'm glad that that Nomi lady didn't, like, just really take over the screen time. Because there's other movies that would do that where, like, next thing you know, they're really pushing her, like, as the main character. And you're like, dude, what the fuck? We didn't show up here to see you. You know what I mean? Like, you like that, that's not what that's not what our ten dollars went towards, you know. But it's like her character's kind of just there, just enough, but not not so much that she gets in the way, and all her parts are like decent. Like I was actually like, oh no, though they they did a good job of doing that. I mean, just enough to kind of like piss off some people, but then it sort of redeems itself. I did kind of think though that like there was another way that this movie could have went that I think would have been kind of interesting is because um, Felix has this like boy with him. You know, in the beginning, and he's kind of this kid is like, oh, golly gee whiz, Felix, you know, like, oh, I always just want to be a Bond, you know, I would have thought that this sounds so weird because that guy turns out to be like, oh, no, he's like, he he talks like he's like the goofy fucking like, you know, you know, almost like 1950s like sidekick boy. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, no, he's like, you know, a murdering kind of like serial killer villain type person and whatnot. You can't trust him. I almost feel that character right there. This sounds so weird in like an alternate way. What if that guy was the 007 person? And at first you're like, this fucking goof is the 007 thing? And then it turns out like, oh no, he's actually a fucking villain. And so on like that. I mean, that's the one's like, I guess he got, it'd be kind of like a Trevelyan thing, I guess it would sort of feel like from like Goldeneye. But I almost felt like that could have been another alternative way that would have been kind of interesting. And then Bond was, well, then when Bond goes to kill him, it would give it like even like a double whammy feel like, fuck you for killing Felix and double fuck you for taking the 007 name. Oh, that guy has a good death when, like, he just has that car kind of looming <laughs> over him. It's only stopped by, like, a tree that's yep. cracking. And then, like, he's like, come on, brother. He's like, I had a brother. It was His name was Felix. Just brings that car to me. Like, nah! I'm like, fuck you. I love the car just, like, bounces off of him. It's, it's a pretty badass. But I thought that, well, too. I was, I'm like, yeah. that guy That guy almost could have been you. Like, because then it would have gave you, like, that real reason. Like, oh, this motherfucker. Like, not only is he, like, just a goofy, like, kid that you don't understand why he got the 007 name, but then it turns out he's just a real evil cynical type person. Yeah, I felt like that would give it, like, a real hardcore revenge feeling, especially if they, like, kind of drug it out, like, towards, like, the end, even. Yeah, well, I also feel like, um, the thing with, uh, like, even the whole thing with Felix, I was glad to see Felix back in this, and the Mm -hmm. second he got shot, I was like, fuck no because i really like jeffrey Wright. yeah i, I like I that his that, character. that guy's a great felix and so on and then it's like that one where it's like i kind of wonder like because i was like well i just watched license to kill recently you know felix he literally gets like like half eaten by a shark and then next thing you know and his wife gets like murdered and raped and so on but by the end of the movie he's like hey bud how was that fucking you know mission down <laughs> south you know what i mean like all i think was like he must be hopped up on some real like hardcore painkillers or something <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's almost like he forgot his wife just was like just brutally like you know you know murdered raped by a, a Benicio del Toro and all kinds of stuff. Well, it's like when you also first see like um, when you first see Casino Royale 
and you just see Jeffrey Wright, like, oh, Jerry, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I actually I didn't really know who Jeffrey Wright was at the time, mm-hmm. but like, okay, all right, all right that, that dude's there. He seems kind of cool compared to the other one. They says, Felix. Like, oh, shit, it's Felix, you know? So, like, and there's even a part where a few times he calls Bond brother, and the fact that when when he's done talking about Felix, he refers to him as brother. Like, that was like, oh, okay, that was a good little tie around right there, because that was their first words to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I thought that would kind of worked out well, and so and even though like yeah, Felix does go down, I feel like it is kind of like that. That does kind of like a fitting line. Like oh, he kind of goes out and just like you see that this kind of dick guy's got to be taken care of. And even later on, like when uh, there's that part where like Bond's trying to explain to M like the, the information he got from Felix, and you know M's doing that thing like he's like oh, I don't bloody fucking care what Felix has to say. It's like well, he doesn't say anything anymore. He's fucking dead. And it's just like oh, well, well I always like Felix. So- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said that. You're an inanimate fucking object. <laughs> I'm sorry, I called Felix an inanimate fucking object. <laughs> but he is now, isn't he? Technically. <laughs> yeah. No, like um, now this this movie. I, I mean, this movie. It's kind of interesting. I, after I see a movie and I come and talk about it on the podcast, I'm kind of like one or the other. Like either. After talking about it, I like it more or I like it less. Like, and I, I, I feel bad because you said, maybe we should do Venom, let there be carnage. I was like, nah, nah. And I go and do it on Octorock Talk <laughs> because nothing else was out that week. I'm like, fuck it. All right, I'll go do, I'll see Venom. And the more I was talking about it, I'm like, no, I don't like this fucking movie. Where this is like, I walked out of this movie liking it. I'm like, oh, I liked it, you know, cause it was a little long and I still feel that way, but I find myself still liking it more the more we go into it. And even the ending, like, I I guess here's the big question. Like, are they just going to reboot it again? Or or are they going to continue the series and 007 is a number they trade off to different actors as the series goes on? Uh, I don't think they're... I I know that that's always that weird theory that somebody just kind of came up with at one point. And I I always feel like... I don't think that's the case. I think they're literally just going to reboot it. But it, it, the only thing it makes me feel is they'll probably wait a bit. So I feel like there won't be another 007 movie for, like, at least another five years. Like, I feel like because you, they'll, they'll let this sort of soak in, I feel like they're going to kind of wait and sort of build it up. And so that that's the only kind of bummer to it. It's like, you, the, obviously, there's going to be another Bond movie, but it's just one of those ones I feel like there's going to be a bit of a waiting process now in this kind of transition period. Well, going back, because I'm not sure, we, we kind of lightly talked about it, and people who haven't seen the movie can probably figure out what happens, but I guess it is just kind of, I'm thinking, like, to be the guy, the first non-British director to come in and direct this movie, and then how many British people are like, oh, I can't wait to see me some 007, because, you know, everyone's cockney, apparently. When yeah, it's like... like... And then... <laughs> <laughs> they go see the movie. Like, the one time we don't get a British director and they fucking kill him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like and like and how does Bond get killed? He gets shot by his own people with, you know, a barrage of missiles. <laughs> I, I, I will say that the one part that was kind of weird was um, when, okay, like, you know, so Bond comes back and she finds uh, Madeline's from, like, the very beginning, you know, once he's like, he's like, you fucking bitch, you sold me fucking out, you know, and, you know, you, you fucking put C4 on, like, you know, uh, what's her name's fucking grave from the first, or from Casino Royale, Vesper, and whatnot, he's like, I named my fucking martini after her, and you put a fucking, she's like, I didn't do any of that, bullshit, why are we fucking in this country, and all that stuff, and he, like, puts her off from the train and she fucking just goes <laughs> like it was almost like two steps away from bond just kind of like fucking like setting her up like fucking encino man and just giving her like a fucking skateboard and some fucking candy and some like a penny jar <laughs> like a sock full of quarters here you go <laughs> yeah exactly and um and then it kind of lets her off and then like when they kind of um uh, come back and meet and whatnot. And there's that part where they go back to Norway or you know, whatever. And then like there's just that kid there. And Bond's like, oh fuck, what's, what's this kid doing here? And so on. Like, and she's like, don't worry, it's not yours. And I do like there's this part where Bond's like, she's like, I need to show you something in, like in, in, in the basement. And <laughs> Bond's like, another kid. <laughs> I, uh, I don't. In my mind, I pictured they were gonna go down the basement and be like, oh yeah, Bond, here's actually your kid. And there's just some fucking like retarded child like tied up down below or something. <laughs> It's like Bart's evil twin from that one exactly. like treehouse of terror. And it's like eating the fish heads and everything, and be like, be like, well, what do you expect? You got beaten the nuts for like ten hours straight. <laughs> Because that's the thing is, like, I always thought that was, like, you know, because, like, literally, I remember being a kid reading Casino Royale for the first time, and that was, like, the first takeaway is, like, you kind of came back to school and you'd be like, 
dude, because it's like that, that's the one Bond one that there technically wasn't like a movie. I mean, you got the the Barry N Nielsen one or whatever from the American version, the original, original 007, you know, made for TV movie. But um, beyond that, though, like, you know, you didn't have it. And, you know, the, not except for the joke Casino Royale one. But um, I remember reading that book and be like, dude, they just like there's a scene in there where Bond's sitting on a chair and somebody's swinging a fucking, you know, you know, ball like, you know, a heavy ball into his nuts like over and over and over. It's like that's fucking weird. Like, you know what I mean? Like maybe that's the reason why he he can't like, you know, have kids and he doesn't worry about like sexual diseases or anything. <laughs> so I, I, I always thought that was like that was literally what I thought Ian Fleming was trying to do. It's like, yeah, that's that's what that's how he <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, I know I know nowadays people just get fixed, but back then that was how you had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm like the second I'm like, like I was like when, when she's like, oh, that's not your kid. I was like, I was like, okay, that makes sense. That's not his kid. It's just like some, you know. And then it was like, oh, that actually is his kid. Oh, oh, that's kind of weird. It's like the idea, like here's your kid. I go like, oh god damn, like back mumbo, back, back. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta feed him fish heads out like the you know the, the, the Nor Norwegian fucking river outside. Here, don't don't put it in the bowl. Just toss just toss the bucket down the stairs. All right, He'll, he survived this long. <laughs> it's like that one Kennedy kid they kept up in the attic. Yeah, exactly. You know, but um, but no, yeah, I, I did think the kid thing was a little bit weird. It's, it's not that it was bad, but I thought it was a little bit like, I mean, it, it definitely was something. If you want something different in a Bond movie, that's like the one. I mean, like the closest thing we get to Bond having a kid, but it's his his nephew or whatever is James Bond Junior. But um, well, I was gonna say, um, I feel like we're at that point. I don't know if it was just coincidental or if this movie was trying to do it, but we're at that point now where a lot of long running series, the sequel almost be like one of the newer sequels becomes a critique of the series itself and for better or worse you know you got the evangelion rebuild movies mm -hmm. you got um you got star wars with um uh, rise of skywalker yeah and then you have not rise of skywalker um uh last jedi, last mm -hmm. jedi. and then you have there, there's other ones too that i'm drawing a blank on but there's a couple of movies franchises that when i don't just some miscellaneous anime that a lot of americans don't know in <laughs> star wars but it's then tough. i, I, I there, there's other ones there's other ones but like those are the only two pop in my head at the moment i'm wondering if this is meant to be something to that effect kind of like all right you had your fun fucking everything that moves and killing a lot of people now you gotta you know stop drinking martinis every day and get a real job and have a kid. I wonder if it's trying to say something kind of like that. I think it sort of is, because I, I know there's there's always those people out there that kind of, I feel like, want to sort of, like, I feel like they're not necessarily really the Bond fans, but they always sort of want to break that Bond kind of like, you know, in a sense. Because really, at the end of the day, like, what Bond is is a World War II veteran. He's literally, he's, you know, he... He's, he's hanging out with people like Cotton from like King of the Hill and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that's kind of like who he is. Like you know, and I feel like it's it, that, that kind of character. I, I guess for certain people, that's like it's hard for them to accept a, like a just a hard edged person who've just seen war and a lot of death and so on and lives a hard life in a sense. I mean, shit. Like in the in the books, like I remember like that was one part I, I even like had a double take too. Is I was like, Bond smokes seventy five cigarettes a day. Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, well, it's also one of those things like I can imagine, like I, I never read the book, so maybe you could tell me, but I imagine that like something you could dismiss away is like, well, he's seen a lot of shit and the only way he can cope is fucking and drinking. That's yeah. the way he can, that, that's, that's the way I took it. But the thing the movies did, they made it look like suave and sexy mm -hmm. rather than some guy like just at a dive bar, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> You have no, you have no idea how many Nazis I skull fucked back in the war. I didn't want to do it. I just, I was dared, and I didn't want to look like a pussy. So, yeah, you know, like, so, I'm kind of wondering, like, if it's something to the effect of like, that was the original intent, and then it just became like, well, we want to make this look cool. We want to make this look hip. We want to give someone to idolize. Yeah. And that's what it became. Because even the movies, as they kind of go on, like, as it, it, Bond changes for the decades, there are certain movies that address, like, social norms that have changed. Like, when Judy Dench first came in and is the new M in Goldeneye, mm -hmm. she's like, I'm not a particular fan of you or the way you act or treat women, so you're going to, I hope there's, she basically says, like, I'm your boss, get ready for it, bitch. You know what I mean? So, yeah. well, something to that the, the, the whole way Goldeneye kind of is, is Bond's still the same person, but everybody else around him has kind of changed in the 90s and so on. And it's almost that, it literally is almost like no different than like Austin Powers 1, where it's like, it's not the swinging 60s anymore. 
You know what yeah. I mean? And I think that's the sort of thing is at first I think it starts off as like literally, hey, it's swinging 60s. It's that kind of stuff. But I think going back to uh, the books and so on like that, I think that's where like, okay, here's a Daniel Craig scene that almost like defines that. And I think it's the one in Skyfall when he gets shot and then he's hanging off in Mexico, like, you know, fighting scorpions and like drinking every night and fucking like, I feel like that kind of defines like the that kind of bomb where it's just like it's it's just there because you know he's just seen so much shit you know and whatnot and so much war and all this kind of like destruction and i feel like that's kind of where it is where it's not necessarily it's you know as pretty and suave as like pierce brosnan or like as fun as like someone like roger moore would make it out like and this one it's just like it's just something to do on a tuesday when, when you've been shot and you still have the bullet inside you <laughs> yeah well well even like something i'll say about the about the daniel craig ones is um even though i i like them I feel like every one, every other one, there is almost kind of like we got to bring them down just to bring them back up again. So, first one, it's kind of like okay, here's the origin, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Second one, it's he's kind of a rogue agent for a second in the second one, mm -hmm. and then the third one, uh, we we think he died. Okay, well, you know, he died, and he's like we don't really, you know, so he's all, he, oh he's just off the grid, but he's out of shape and he can't do it like he used to he has ptsd he's a fucking schlub and this one it's just kind of like it's not so much as is of that but it's more of like yeah fuck this shit i'm done with it you know i'm just kind of hanging out here in, in jamaica or wherever you know mm -hmm. which i will say it's actually cool that, like all the jamaica stuff but that's always awesome too because i always think of like that's where uh, ian fleming like wrote all the bond books and everything was down there in his like house golden eye and Jamaica and whatnot. So I thought that was cool. They kind of had that. It felt like if Bond was going to go somewhere to like, in a sense, sort of like somewhat retire or kind of like live, it's like it would be Jamaica. That, that seems like such a Bond place. I could see that, yeah. But um, I, I do think it is that one where like, I will say, because it's like, you know what's the weird thing is because like the Daniel Craig Bonds have like a very like Dark Knight Batman kind of like arc feeling to them. Like, you know, Casino Royale feels a lot kind of like Batman Begins. You know, um, and then as it kind of goes on, like literally it has like the double rise feeling of like Dark Knight Rises, really. And it's just like his Batman or like Bond has to kind of keep rising, which is almost kind of like I sometimes I kind of like I, I know people like that where it happens like, oh, like, oh, you know, it's like almost like he doesn't really want to be there, you know, but like it is that kind of thing when you kind of like go back and forth with it. It's like I, I always feel like, no, like I kind of like the idea of Bond is like, no, this is who he is. He, he literally almost like likes being like as you know a secret agent more than like almost anybody else does like he doesn't know anything else like that's just what he's into and he shows up to work every day on time and you know you know solves any problem that you know m has with a gun loaded and the safety already off yeah yeah exactly and i, I kind of like i, I and it's as well those ones i will say it's like i think that like yeah because when you when you kind of think of the daniel craig ones i felt like they did that almost a little too much where like either he goes partially rogue or he goes um like fuck it, I'm out. I'm out of here for like the weekend, and then the weekend turns into like a three month bender. Yeah. Well, yeah, because okay, so he went on like that. Cra he wasn't like he got momentarily suspended at Casino Royale, but it was a very fleeting moment. Oh, yeah. And then he was a rogue agent <laughs> and number two, and then number three, he was presumed dead, but then just on a bender. Four, I think. I think Spectre. I think that's the only one. Yeah. Where. Hey, I'm still in this. It's still my job. What am I gonna do? What you gonna do? You know? Yeah, I think so. Because I almost want to say, <clears throat> like I said, because Spectre's probably the one I've seen the least amount of them than this new one, just because the second newest one. But um, I almost want to say, yeah, that one's like one of the ones where like, because that one was one of the first ones I remember that started feeling more like a old school 007. You know, because I felt like they kind of tiptoed into it, where like. You know, Casino Royale and, and um, Quan Salas definitely have, like, this feels like this is, like, the new, this is the 2000s new Bond and so on. And then it is, like, they started, like, slowly trickling in stuff from um, Skyfall, Spectre, and then um, No Time to Die, you know, got, you know, more and more. And I felt like that's sort of how it kind of went. But... Yeah, I, I kind of hope of the you know the next one they don't do so much of like the you know like the yo-yoing of like he he's you know he's working then he's not working then he's working not working, you know because you don't really think about it until you kind of stop and like for a second go oh wait a second you look at it and you go that's right like Bond's you know like every other movie he's practically like you know shit almost every movie he's literally like working and then not working and then he's off on leave and then he's back and then he's on a bender and then like he's going rogue. Yeah, it's almost like you want to well, savor that because I feel like that's what makes. Like, why, when Bond goes rogue and die another day, what makes that so special is it's like, you know, the last time Bond went rogue was literally, like, a license to kill. Like, you know what I mean? It's, like, over ten years. Like, you know, you want to sort of savor those moments, you know? And and even before that, like, I don't think 
I'm trying to think if there is a bond where he actually goes rogue in like the earlier ones. There's always an order he goes against or something, but yeah. as far as Rogue Rogue goes... Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I Rogue Rogue, where it's just like, you know... Yeah. Um, I'll say, going back, because we, really, we didn't really talk about Rami Malek so much, but another situation where you get this actor that's that a lot of people like, mm-hmm. and it's not that he's bad, but they don't really utilize him. And he's just kind of there, like, oh, I forgot he was in it for a minute. You know what I mean? Because yeah. kind of, there's, there's so many characters in the movie, whether they be returning or new characters. So I'm like, oh, fuck, I forgot he's in it and I'm gonna say I don't think he's supposed to be Dr. No but I think there's definitely some Dr. No inspiration just with the island and everything kind of has like an ambiguous kind of eastern kind of like hint to it around the whole island and then there's also the um um just the whole secret lair thing because we haven't had a secret lair in a Bond movie for a while yeah it's, it's literally since um Die Another Day like because that's the thing is like this movie kind of has a lot of that kind of like stuff that like yeah literally hasn't been around since Die Another Day and, and I definitely think yeah, it has like I'm, I'm glad it wasn't Dr. No because at first I thought that's like oh are they just going to do that because that was almost giving me that same feeling like Star Trek 2 where it's just like how about we just get like a new character in here instead or something like that like you know what I mean and I'm glad that he even though he kind of had elements of Dr. No he was still his own character mm-hmm yeah, I, well, I was wondering if it was me, Doctor No, and I was thinking back, like I just remember on Doctor No's real name, and I look it up, like okay, no, it's not Doctor No, but um, even that whole thing though, because it was, I think everyone just assumed because it's in the name, like No Time to Die, you know, so like, yeah. oh, it's got to be Doctor No, but um, at the same time though, I feel like uh, that whole thing with that character because he what he 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 played it good, but it was once again one of those things like. Yeah, he's a good actor, and he, he did a good job, but he just wasn't in it a whole lot. So you get to the very end, and he's just like, Welcome to my poison farm, you know? Don't well, you like the don't you like my poison garden with all the, like, sand shit everywhere? You know? Well, I kind of hate to say it, but, like, realistically, you could almost even take him out and just make Blofeld, th- take all his parts and just turn those into Blofeld parts, and that almost could have probably, in a sense, probably worked better. I'm not saying... I, I liked him a lot, but I'm just saying, like... I felt like it's almost like you needed one of the other characters, in a sense. Well, I mean, well, plus they also went out of their way, like, because they go out of their way to make Spectre this big deal in the last movie. Yeah. And I know I just, I know I was just praising this movie, but uh, even though I liked the movie, it wasn't perfect, but, you yeah. know, I think we both agree that. But then, like, they go out of their way to make Spectre this big deal. Like, Spectre was the ones behind everything in the previous movies. Like, oh, okay, all right. The beginning of this, like... Here we are at the Spectre Company party, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. and then like everyone fuck everyone in Spectre dies. Yeah, and, and like, for some oh, reason okay. it's in Jamaica where Bond's been living for the last five years. Isn't that kind of ironic? Yeah. Oh, was it Cuba? Was it Cuba? Or oh something? no, that's right. They they, they went to Cuba. That, 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 I forgot. Wait, well, the hop skipping the jump away practically. Well, I thought that was a cool concept just to kind of like fuck with the uh, because you know how like 007 came to Bond, like or um. New 007 came to Bond. It was just kind of like, hey, stay out of her way, this and that. He's like, oh, now I'm definitely going to go help out the fucking CIA. <laughs> like, I, that, I like that little dynamic. Like, oh, he's being he's not being a rogue agent, but he's just basically being a bounty hunter for CIA for a minute. That's actually a pretty cool concept. Yeah, no, I, I thought that was kind of cool. He takes on the mission there. And so and that, the cool thing, too, is because then they got the girl from... Um, um, uh, knives, out. knives out and I was like and she plays actually and, and the, the upside I like about that is she felt like because the one thing that's always generally mostly the complaint to a lot of the Daniel Craig's one is there's, there's never really been like Bond girls too much I mean you know a lot of them like they're sort of there but then they kind of like either disappear really quick and she kind of felt like she kind of was holding a little bit of like hey here's a cool Bond girl that's going to kick some ass and so on she's only in it for you know like 15 minutes or something but her, like that scene's really amazing and she does a yeah, really good was... job that was probably one of the best scenes in the movie. And yeah, I liked her a lot, especially they got across the, the point, like she's more than an average soldier, but as far as like this division of the CIA, she's new to it. And I kind of liked how they got that across, but they weren't like for a split second. I was like, you guys are going to be too comically or cartoon with this. How's this girl going to get by with this? But, Oh, she's better than that. She's just new to this particular version of CIA work, but she's done plenty of this type of shit before. And I found myself really liking that girl. She gave me some vibes of like, a Sean Connery or Roger Moore Bond girl, in yeah. all honesty. Yeah, because that's what she sort of felt like. She felt kind of like, you know, in a sense, like the Bond girl that really hasn't been there in sort of a while. I mean, like, because all the ones in like the sort of the Daniel Craig one, they're, 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 they're definitely toned down. You know, you're not you're not getting sort of like the, um, you're not getting like the Denise Richards ones or someone like that, <laughs> you know, or even like, I mean, I'll even say even you're not getting something like even like kind of Halle Berry. I mean, I know that like, um, uh, what what's her name in this one? Um, um, What's it, Nomi? 
whatever. She yeah. kind of feels like she's sort of taken on like the Jinx sort of like Halle Berry ish kind of care. Like literally, I'll, I'll say this: you almost could have pulled Halle Berry as that Nomi lady and just said, "This is Jinx," and she's taking over. That, that almost would have been a better idea. I mean, I know that would have tied it in in a weird way to like, I know because people kind of have mixed feelings about that character, but I felt like, and it would have tied it into like the Pierce Brosnan one. But if you almost just sort of put Halle Berry in that Nomi role instead and just said, "Hey, this is Jinx." She's transferred over from whatever the CIA or whatever she was working for and whatnot, and now she's taking on the devil. I felt like that um, people would almost like maybe accepted that a little bit more because that's almost what that character sort of feels like. It, it's kind of I mean it's it's, like it's its own character, but it almost feels like it literally is trying to be uh, Halle Berry's type of character. Well, there are some things that are very unapologetic from um, older Bond films that are in this, like just like and I I don't mean that like unapologetic, like you should be sorry, but I mean I, there, there's sometimes like even like. My favorite Daniel Craig one is Skyfall. They, they, they still have a couple of those self-deprecating lines. Like, what are you, what are you expo- expecting? A pen that explodes or something kind of like that? Mm-hmm. Where this is very much like, you know, there's the one the one douchebag right-hand man. I don't know if his real name was Cyclops or if Bond was just being an asshole to him. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, like, when, like, his eyeball pops out and it opens up kind of, like, he's a little, like, you know, like, compartment thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he says, like... I had to run in with four. It was rather eye-opening, you know. Yeah. And it's just kind of like there's like so many moments like that, or how he has the like basically the the watch that like jams like com- like the, electronics. The EMP, and he like, puts what? that. Yeah, yeah. And he puts it to that fucker's eye, and he says like, "I just blew his mind," you know. Well, well I like his time- cue first ask him. He's like, "What? What was that?" He's like, "Oh, I was just showing somebody your new watch. <laughs> blew his mind." And usually, like, I almost kind of wish, like, I understand. I mean. Bond should technically be R, but I get if it's PG-13. But I almost think it'd be funny if you just have something so grotesque and so violent, but then still give it, like, a PG dad joke. Like, he puts that thing up to his eye, and the whole back of his head explodes and, like, goes all over the wall. He's just like, oh, just blew his mind. Ha, ha, ha. Well, and the thing is, too, is because I feel like... Is Bond literally is like the action character that created the one-liners in a sense? I mean, there's, we probably look hard enough. There's somebody before him, but I feel like that's really like where we get all like the the action character one-liners. Literally comes from 007 more than anything else. He's the one that made it popular. So I'm glad to see that they actually threw a lot of them in here, and they they all like kind of work. It's not like there's any goofy ones or something like that or anything like that. It's like no, it's like each one of these ones like is a great line and like makes you laugh. I will say actually, you know what? Speaking of you, since you said radar though. This movie, I think, has the first fuck for, like, a 007. I might, yeah. Like, first or... Uh, maybe one of the other ones might have said it briefly, but, yeah, they did. Yeah, I was going to say, what, uh, the, the only one that I would say that maybe said it, because I is would be, like, Spectre, but I don't think so. I, but it's like, yeah. M literally gets, like, a fuck in here. I, I haven't seen Spectre enough to say... I, I mean, I could see... I could imagine hearing it somewhere else, but I, it was... Yeah, the one time I know for a fact they said it. But I was gonna, like going back off that, just like another cheesy puns, like the idea of like Bond like kicks some dude and pales him in multiple ways, like on like some on some spikes on a wall, and he just like gargling blood coming out. Like, oh, my family, my family. Like, why don't you just stick around? Like, I'm dying. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, on the next mission. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly, but it's like I I look because I I like all that kind of stuff. Like I know that some yeah some people I think it's, it's that weird like the weird balance of bonds is that in a sense there's about generally at the end of the day there's two types of bonds fans. There's the people that just feel like really British and very serious and they want their bond to have like it's not fuck it, fucking funny. It's a secret mission. It's you know it, it's literally like we, I want it to feel like it's fucking Sam Fisher in a sense. And even Sam Fisher has funny moments, but you know what I mean like it's like they they want it to be like hardcore like no no no, there's nothing fucking funny about like, you know, espionage and stuff. And then there's the people that they're like, you know, I kind of like when it's sort of over the top and where, you know, I, I always kind of hate this term when people say it but like comic booky because comic booky almost makes it sound like it's like retarded. I don't I don't know. When people say like, you know, that kind of felt kind of comic book it just feels like like almost like a slap in the face like well you obviously probably haven't read comic books then <laughs> that's how you're defining it <laughs> but you know I what i mean you, but you know what i mean yeah. though is like i because I, I personally like a little bit of the over the top i feel like I, it, it goes back to this old saying i used to always say like in the because just when i think of 2000s movies i go hey if i want to see realistic i'll just look out the fucking window when i watch the like the movie screen i want to see something a little bit over the top that you're not, not going to see looking out the window yeah, and going back off this movie right here, it does do a good job of like bouncing out, you know, the realistic and the. Um, <laughs> it does a good job of bouncing out the realistic Bond as well as like what we've come to expect Bond in the long in the long haul of it. 
Because even kind of going off, like, you know, earlier I said, we never had a secret lair in, like, the De in Daniel Craig ones. Well, technically, you know, we'd had a secret lair, but if it did, it was, like, a dilapidated warehouse or old military base yeah. with some computer servers, and that's all it was. Where this one was like, oh, no, this full-on is the evil bad guy lair. And if they found a way to make it work and still make it look visually interesting. And, like, you know, they have the point of, like, you know, an airplane that's also a submarine. And still, like, oh, that actually looks like that could work, you know? So it's one of those things where I think this movie does do a good job. It's not my favorite of the Craig ones. Um, it's probably like middle range for me on Daniel Craig ones because there is a lot of really good things about it, but the middle just really drags on. But well, I mean, well, for the most I, part, I found myself liking it. Well, I, I think it sounds weird. It's almost like, in a sense, you, you know what I think really kind of makes it drag more than anything else? It's not saying that all this stuff's bad, but it's almost like the 007 kind of like love romance, which I know that they're hearkening back to like – um, on a massive secret service with um, Tracy Bond and all that kind of stuff, you know. But that one's almost feels like because that fucking comes out of, like fucking left field in that movie. You're just watching that movie and all of a sudden it's like, oh, they have a nice wedding. Fucking Blofeld's defeated and all this kind of stuff, and then all of a sudden fucking Blofeld's up there with a sniper rifle as they're driving off, literally like as the wedding is, and you know he blasts her with, with um, the sniper rifle, and she's fucking bleeding out in Bond's arms, and he's holding like. <sighs> We, we still have time we have time and it fucking does the 1969 like just cuts the fucking credits <laughs> like there's 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 no extra ending or anything like that and i felt like that's almost what makes that one feel so brutal and like oh fuck like it hit, like it hits real hard you know and so on and i will say in this one though is like because you, since they are kind of doing that and then they kind of go a little bit farther you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, let's give like Bond like a real like love interest. I mean, like they sort of do it like, in, it's kind of weird because they make Daniel Craig like he's gonna be this serious Bond who doesn't have any attachments and so on, but he always keeps getting attached to people. It's like he gets attached to um, um, Vesper. Vesper, and you know the first one, and then he's kind of attached to you know even more of the other characters and so on in each one. But um, and then this one's almost like he is there, but I almost feel like it sounds weird for a Bond movie. It's almost like you almost could have still toned that down just maybe a little bit because I feel like it's the Madeline Swan stuff that's almost the stuff that kind of drags it out in that midsection. Or, it's almost like not even mid. It's like almost like the third act out of a four-act movie, I guess you'd almost say, like since it's so I, long. I, I will say, speak on the attachment things before we wrap up here, mm -hmm. I do wish there was a scene where, like, you know, right when Felix dies because, you know, he, they're on a sinking boat and he takes, he finds out a life raft. <laughs> I wish he brought Felix's body on him with the life raft and he's just like looking at him all sad and then like when he gets back to like land just hard cut him dropping Felix in a dumpster <laughs> like just going through his wallet and then leaving it's like it's, like, it's, just, it's, it's the only funeral he knows <laughs> this is how they do it I just thought this is how you say goodbye everywhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I learned from my father before he died at like his hiking accident when I was age 11 he would have wanted it this way. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> Just those hard cuts. Because it sounds weird. This movie's almost the one that could have worked for all those kind of weird, like, hard cut scenes where you wouldn't expect it to be, like, because almost like since it had just a little bit of, like, the fun kind of cheese lines and so on, I feel like you, you could get away in this movie with that kind of stuff. I'm just thinking of that part in <laughs> Quantum of Solace. Like, you were there for us. <laughs> 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 dumps him in the him in a dumpster and takes his fucking wallet and phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, the, no I, I like this movie. I'll say if you like 007, check it out. But you as the 007 aficionado, I'm guessing you're on the same wavelength there. Yeah, I, I liked it quite a bit. I, I was I was overall pretty darn impressed with it. Yeah, as I said, like it's one of those ones like, probably got to give it a couple more watches to see where you would kind of put it in like the um, in the roster of at least the Daniel Craig ones. But yeah, I, I would say it's probably somewhere kind of like I guess it's better, maybe better than Spectre. That's about, that's about probably where it's sitting at, him, if I had to kind of guess. But, um, you know, uh, it's still good. I still feel like it, it kind of still works in all the stuff, even that it does try to do. Even, like, the weird things of, like, Bond having a kid and so on like that. It's like, even though that can be kind of odd, I feel like it, it, you still kind of go, okay, I, I, I can go with it at least. You know what I mean? It's the same thing yeah. of kind of like uh, with... Um, know me is kind of being like taking over like the 007 thing you're kind of like mm, i know that's just because i know there's some people we know they're gonna be like fuck that cunt like what the hell is this shit like i i already know if i ask somebody that like that's that that part's gonna really bother some certain 007 fans but um you know but she that she serves her purpose she comes back around yeah, and, she and, is, but, but and she she's she's not a bad character i guess that's the thing is she makes yeah. up for it in a sense and i like that she gives up the, the role of the, the 007 thing i feel like that just felt like the honorable thing to do it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's like one of those ones. I mean, 
Uh, yeah, as I said, like that, that, that that's one of those moments it's definitely thrown in there just to be like a kick in the balls to certain people, you know, but um but it still kind of ended up working. That's how this kind of movie feels. Like there's certain things in it that, that feel like they if they weren't done right could almost like really maybe derail the film, but it still comes around. But yeah, yeah. I feel like um because that's something I've been talking about for years. We're gonna get, we're gonna replace 007 with like a lady or something like that. The, the Jane Bond thing. <laughs> yeah, and then they did, but then they brought it back around another way. So I guess the question is, I think they are just gonna reboot it, but I, I, I could also see the possibility of them just 007s, just the number traded off to people in the spy franchise, but without. I mean, it's James Bond is the character we all know because they just said, even in this movie, double, the number 007 is just the number. That's all they say a couple of times. So, yeah. you know, um, but we'll, you know, I thought that she was a good character. You know, I like their dynamic, the trying to one up each other. And then eventually around, it's not like too immediate when they come around and get respect for each other. They slowly build up and get there. And um, yeah, I thought she worked and uh, I thought she was a good character. And I mean, nobody in this movie did a bad no. job. No, I mean, she, we, we even talk about even, you know, Money Penny is, you know, and she's always does, you know, a, a pretty good job and so on, too. She doesn't have as much of a part in this one as she did in some of the other ones. But yeah. um, it felt because it felt like this this one was Bonds, but they, they got almost a little too many characters in it. So it's sort of kind of like there's only so much time for so many characters in a sense. Yeah, there are moments where I forgot about like what the part uh, I think the. The, the douchey uh, CIA guy, Logan Ash, I think. For some reason, I remember that name, Logan Ash. I don't yeah. know I remember that name. But yeah, when, when he came back, oh, fuck, right, him. Because there is so many characters in this movie. But yeah, no, I, I do recommend the movie. It was a good time. Yeah, it, it definitely is one of those ones. It's one of those films. It's definitely worth, like, the wait. It's not like one of those ones where it's like, oh, we had to wait, like, you know, a year and almost, like, almost two years even. And it's like, no, 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 it, it actually panned out as being real solid and so on. You know, even if it is just a tad bit longer, it's one of those few movies that probably could just have that little bit of extra. If you just trimmed it to a normal 007 length, and it's one of those ones like, I'll say, I, I didn't lose really interest in it, but I, I feel like it would make it roll just a little bit smoother, just like, just, just trim down just a little bit of like, I don't know, not, you know, obviously not the action scene. You trim down, you just trim down some of those like fucking like Bond. I don't, I don't know what Making you, breakfast for his kid scenes. Yeah. yeah, like those fucking awkward moments where he's like making a crepes, like, what? Fucking eat up. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, it's a it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. Not my favorite Daniel Craig movie, not my favorite Bond movie, but I still enjoyed it, and um, I think it's a good one for him to go out on. Yeah, so I'll look forward to seeing what comes next and so on like that. But um, yeah, beyond all that good stuff, go to oldmanorange.com, check out more comic books, things like Pizza Boys, more podcasts, animations, and all that fun stuff. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we'll see you some other time. Later, folks.